Did you just realize Christmas is right around the corner and you haven't gotten all your Christmas presents yet? Well, I've got you covered in today's video because I'm sharing five easy and beginner-friendly sewing projects that you can make for Christmas presents. And I say that because I actually made all these for Christmas presents. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel and Merry Christmas. It is the most wonderful time of the year. I literally love Christmas time. And I decided that this year I was going to DIY and make all of my gifts. And by that I literally mean sewing gifts for my entire family and my husband's family. So it's even double <laughs> the people this year, but it's actually been really fun. I have not like homemade gifts for people since I was a little kid and I just always love having the opportunity to make something for someone that I could give them that I made with my own two hands and it came from my own creativity and my thought and my heart and my love for them. So that is where all of these projects have come from. I have been working on all of my Christmas presents and I decided to kind of go with a lot of the same things for everyone but different variations and really useful gifts that I knew would come in handy and they would use quite frequently. I'm going to be sharing five different sewing projects for Christmas presents in today's video and because of that this video is a little bit longer so if you are wanting to skip ahead to specific projects I put all the timestamps down in the description of this video in case you don't want to watch the whole thing. We are going to be making two different tote bags, a book sleeve and then a scrunchie and a hair bow. So really fun things, definitely very trendy, things that you typically see on social media Media that creators are making and selling small businesses and if you're a sewist you can make these for yourself and give them as gifts. For every single project I'm going to walk you through the supplies that you're going to need, how you would make your patterns and how you would actually construct it and I will also put additional details in the description of this video. So without further ado let's get sewing some Christmas presents. This is my bag inspiration. So I already made my pattern for this bag. This is the pattern. It is 17 inches wide by 15 inches tall. And then I cut out one and a half inch sections on the corners. And then the pocket is placed in the center. It's four inches down from the top. And the pocket is, is seven inches wide. We have the pocket right here. And then we have the bag strap. So those are our three pieces. The bag strap is 24 inches wide by four and a half, or 24 inches long by four and a half inches wide. So those are our three pieces. After you've drafted out your pattern piece, it's now time to cut out all of your pattern pieces from your fabric. I'm using these ruffly pillow shams that I thrifted because the fabric was just so cool. So whatever fabric you're using, you're going to fold it in half and double it so that when you cut the bag out one time, you get two pieces. You're going to do this for the outside fabric and then you're also going to do it for the lining fabric. So we're just going to cut all around our bag pattern piece. So after you cut out all of your bag pieces, you are going to cut out the additional pattern pieces that you need, such as your straps, your lining, and your inside pocket. And these are what all of the pieces are going to be. You're going to have three parts to your bag, your lining, the outside of your bag, and then your quilt batting, your straps, you're going to have quilt batting, two straps, and then two pockets. The first step in sewing your quilted tote bag is to actually quilt the outside fabric of your bag to your quilt lining. You can do this in multiple different patterns for quilting, but I just decided to do vertical lines that were one inch apart and then horizontal lines that were one inch apart. Once those are quilted together, it kind of gives it a square checkerboard pattern. The quilting process is essentially sewing a ton of lines all over your fabric, but what this does is connects the quilt batting to the outside of your bag and gives it kind of the fun 3D quilted effect. It 
And here's what all of those quilted stitches look like on the outside of my bag. As you can see, there's a very faint kind of checkerboard pattern. Once all of my quilting seams are done, I then pinned my pocket to the outside of my bag. And I did this by folding in the raw edges half an inch and then pinning it onto the pocket placement. Then I'm going to sew around the sides and the bottom of my pocket. And I actually put two rows of stitches side by side. So the first is right on the edge of the pocket. And the second was about a fourth of an inch or like just a above and inside that stitch to kind of give a nice double stitch effect. That the outside pieces of our bag are quilted and we have attached our outside pocket, we are going to then place those pieces right sides together to sew our side seams and our bottom seams. We're just going to pin those layers together and we're going to sew it on a 5 8 inch seam allowance. You are going to leave the corners open though when you are pinning these layers together because we are going to box our corners. Once you've sewn the sides of the outside of your bag together, you're going to set that aside and work on the inside lining of your bag. This also has a pocket, so we're gonna take our pocket piece and fold the raw edges in half an inch and press them. I did that off camera. Then I'm going to center that on one of the sides of my lining, pin it into place, and then sew that down. We're going to use a double seam for this pocket as well. And then we're going to take our other lining piece Place it on top of our other lining piece, right sides together, and then we are going to pin the sides and pin the bottom just like we did on the outside of our bag. Now you are going to want to leave about a four to five inch opening at the bottom of your bag lining, and then you're going to sew the sides and the bottom, keeping that opening unsewn and then keeping your corners open as well. Your seam allowance for all of the side seams of this bag are all going to be five eighths inch seam allowance. Once you have sewn both the side and the bottom seams of your bag lining and the outside of your bag, you are going to press those seams open. This is just going to help when we attach our lining to the outside of our bag. Keep in mind our corners are still unopened. Those are going to be the next things that we sew. Next up, we need to sew our corners closed. These are called boxed corners because when we pull our corners apart and match up those side and bottom seams and then sew straight across that corner that was cut, it's going to create a boxy bottom. So the best way to explain this is to kind of pull your corners apart like you're opening a bag of chips, match up the side seam and the bottom seam of your bags, sew those, and then the corners are going to come out all boxy like this. Really nice and professional. Next, we are going to work on the straps for our bag. So you are going to need a quilt batting strap piece and a printed strap piece. You are going to place those on top of themselves, and then you are going to fold in the long edges of the straps half an inch and press them. This is the first step in creating our straps. After those side edges are pressed in half an inch, you are then going to fold the strap in half long ways and press it again, and then you are going to pin that open edge closed. These are what your straps are going to look like after you have pressed and folded them. And now we are going to sew that open pinned edge together. We are actually going to be sewing two kind of parallel rows of stitching on our straps so that they have even stitches. So we're going to sew the open pin edge closed with a fourth of an inch seam allowance. And then across from that on the other edge of our strap, we are going to put another stitch that's a fourth of an inch seam allowance. Once our straps are created, we are going to attach everything together. So we are gonna take the lining of our bag, flip it right side out, and stick that inside our bag that is flipped wrong side out. Then we are going to pin our straps into place where we want them to have their proper placement. I place mine about three inches from my side seam. And then we are going to sandwich our straps in between the lining of our bag and the outside of our bag.
We're gonna continue pinning all around the opening of our bag, sandwiching our straps in between our lining fabric and the outside of our bag. Now you do not have to leave any opening during this part of pinning around the top of your bag because remember, you have an opening in the bottom lining of your bag and that's how you're going to flip this right side out after you sew it. We're gonna sew all of those layers together using 5 8 inch seam allowance. Now that we have sewn all of the layers of our bag together, we need to flip it right side out. Now you might be wondering, how in the world do we do this? Well, that is where the opening in our lining comes in handy, and this is the little bag magic trick that is so fun when sewing projects like this. So we're just going to pull it all right side out, and then you can just stuff the lining down into the bag. We though are going to want to press around the top of our bag and then we are going to stitch around the top to kind of lock our straps into place and give it a little bit more stability and some clean lines on the outside. This seam is going to be a fourth of an inch seam allowance all the way around the top of our bag to really kind of top stitch our lining into place and then also lock in our straps so that they don't just rip out when you put tons of books and goodies in your bag. And don't forget the last step before your bag is officially done is to sew the hole in the lining of your bag closed so that there is no hole on the inside. You can do this by just sewing right along the edge of that fabric. And here is what the bag looks like all finished. So this is a great confident beginner to advanced fun DIY sewing projects and quilted bags are so trendy right now so I hope you give this a try. All right, our next easy DIY sewing project is a another tote bag. This one is a little simpler, but it still has some fun flares. So I'm using a long pillowcase that I thrifted for this project, and that's actually all you are going to need for this bag. It's not going to have a lining. So first off, you are going to mark 17 and a half inches up from the bottom of this pillowcase and you are going to then cut that. That is going to be the main base of your bag. Everything else that we cut is going to be our straps and ruffles. We want this tote bag to have box corners as well, so we are going to draw a two by two inch square on the bottom corners of this bag. So just the two bottom corners, you're going to draw that square and then you are going to cut those out. Those are gonna become our box corners later on. Then we are going to cut a two inch wide strip off of the leftover fabric from the pillowcase. That is going to be the interfacing along the top opening of our bag. After we cut that, we are going to work on cutting our straps. Our straps are going to be three and a half inches wide. And we are going to cut two of those three and a half inch strips, again, out of what is left over from this pillowcase. Those are going to be folded in half and turned into our straps. Next, we're going to hop up to the top of our pillowcase where the edges have been folded under into a really thick hem and we are just going to cut the seam off that hem so that we can separate that piece. This is going to become our ruffles. So the crease that is in this piece, which was essentially the very tip top of this pillowcase, we are going to cut separating that long strip into two pieces and those are going to be turned into our ruffles. Now don't forget that any of the pieces that have seams in them, we need to seam rip as well. For the ruffle pieces that we cut from the top portion of our pillowcase, we are going to iron those flat and then iron them in half long ways so that they are about two inches wide. And then we are going to ruffle those together. Our straps, we are going to fold in half an inch on the sides and then we are going to fold in half. So the strap pieces are essentially going from three and a half inches wide to about one and a half inches wide with all of the folding. I also decided to shorten my strap pieces about three inches. Then we're gonna go back to our bag piece. I'm going to cut the crease in one side of my bag and then I'm going to rip the seam open in the other side. These sides need to be open so that I can insert my ruffles. Next, we're gonna work on sewing our straps. The first seam is to close the 
edges that have been folded under half an inch. So we are going to sew that side closed first and then we are going to do the same seam on the opposite side of the strap. So essentially two seams that are parallel to each other, both sewn at a fourth of an inch seam allowance. Next, we are going to sew the sides of our ruffle pieces closed. We're gonna do this by placing our fabric right side together and then just sewing those open edges closed so that when we flip it right side out, there won't be any raw edges and it'll be nice, neat edges, just like this. Then on each raw edge side of our ruffle pieces, we are going to put one single basting stitch. This is going to be a stitch with the longest stitch length and no back stitches. This is so that we can pull that thread and ruffle and bunch those pieces together to create the fun ruffles for the sides of our bag. The length of our ruffle pieces need to be about half an inch shorter than the sides of our bag. And then we are going to sandwich those ruffles in between both sides of our bag, pinning them together. Here's a little sneak peek of what those ruffles look like on the sides of our bag. Then we are going to attach the ruffles to the sides of our bag by sewing the sides of our bag close with a fourth of an inch seam allowance. And then I also finished my seams on my serger. Then we're going to box our corners where we're going to just pull the edges, kind of like we're opening a bag of chips, match up the side seam of our bag and the bottom seam of our bag, and then pin across that straight line. And we're gonna do that for both corners. So both of those on a fourth of an inch seam allowance. And then I just used a zigzag stitch to finish those raw edges. And here's what the ruffles on our bag look like and the pretty boxed corners. Next, we're going to attach the straps to our bag by pinning our straps right side together where the edges are just at the top. I pinned my straps about four inches from the side and then that interfacing strip piece, which was just a strip of fabric we cut from our pillowcase, we're going to pin around the top of our bag. This is going to kind of help us finish those raw edges and also help us kind of sandwich our straps in between the outside of our bag and the inside. So we're just going to pin and sew around the top. Then we're gonna flip that little piece into the inside, iron and press around the top of our bag, and then we're going to stitch around the top to lock those straps into place and keep our little interfacing piece inside of our bag. I also decided to add these new clothing tag labels that I got to the outside of my bag to kind of give it like a fun brand type of feel. And this is what the ruffled tote bag looks like. It is definitely a totally adorable tote bag. You should totally make it. All right, next up is a very easy and fun Christmas gift, and that is a book sleeve. This is perfect for the people you know who love to read and don't wanna mess up their books while they're traveling. So you're going to create your pattern piece. I have already done this off camera, and the dimensions for this book sleeve pattern piece are going to be 12 and a half inches tall and nine inches wide. Now you're also going to notice up here that about an inch from the top, you're going to draw a line and that is where you are going to fold it for your lining. So the outside of your book sleeve is going to be longer than your lining. You're going to cut two pieces for your lining, two pieces of your quilt batting, and two pieces for the outside of your book sleeve. You're going to need some type of quilt batting similar to the tote bag, and then you're also going to need fabric. The easiest fabric to get for this project is simply to get two um, quilt quarters or fabric quarters. These are 18 inches by 21 inches and you just need two of these, one for the outside of your book sleeve and one for the inside. So I have already gotten my two colors I'm going to be using for this book sleeve. So now we're just going to cut out all the pieces. To save yourself some time when cutting, you can layer all of your fabric pieces together. So the lining of my book sleeve and the outside of my book sleeve, I'm just going to layer together. I folded both pieces of fabric in half because we need two pieces of each piece. So we're just going to pin around our pattern piece that we created and cut out the outside of our book sleeve and the inside of our book sleeve. Now, one thing you need to make sure and do is on your pattern piece, the line that you drew, which is your fold line for the lining of your book sleeve, you're going to wanna make sure to trim off that excess for the lining of your book sleeve since it's supposed to be a little bit shorter. So now we have the outside of our book sleeve, the inside of our book sleeve, and then our quilt batting. 
Next, we are going to take our lining fabric and place it right side out, right side facing you on top of those quilt batting pieces. And then we are going to attach those layers together by quilting them. You can do this in any method and pattern you would like, but I am simply sewing vertical stitches up and down across these lining pieces and I'm making them about one inch apart. I decided not to draw lines for where to sew in quilting these so I kind of just eyeballing the one inch and then I'm pivoting at the corner so that it can be a continuous seam but essentially this seam is going to help our pretty cute lining fabric and attach it to our quilt batting. You have the option of putting a tag on the inside of your book sleeve, but this is what all of the quilted seams look like. Once we have the inside of our book sleeve pieces, we are going to take the outside of our book sleeve and we are going to pin that fabric right side together onto the lining. We're just going to pin straight across the top and sew that at a fourth of an inch seam allowance. Now that you have sewn each outside piece to each inside piece, you're going to flip that open and then we are going to place both pieces right sides together. So your lining pieces are now going to want to meet up right sides together and the outside of your book sleeve pieces, you are going to want to meet up right sides together. On the outside sleeve portions of your fabric, you're going to want to leave about a three or four inch opening at the bottom and then everything else you're going to pin and sew at a fourth of an inch seam allowance. Now I realized when sewing this book sleeve that it actually comes together way better if you sew the outside of your book sleeve at a fourth of an inch seam allowance and then the seam allowance for the inside of your sleeve, sew it at a half an inch so that when you stuff it to the inside it lays a whole lot neater. So when you get to the inside quilted part of your book sleeve, you're going to want to switch your seam allowance to either a half an inch or five eighths inch. Now before you flip it right side out, you're going to want to trim that bulky seam allowance on the inside portion of your book sleeve, especially since it has the quilt batting and you're also going to want to clip your corners. This is just going to help everything lay nicely and help the corners be nice and crisp. Now it's time for the magic trick where you flip everything right side out. This is just literally so fun. You're going to pull everything out and really just kind of press all of your edges and corners so that everything is kind of really nice and flat. And then you're also going to want to iron this before you do anything else. So after you press it, then you're gonna come and find the opening on the outside of your bag and you're gonna sew that closed right on the edge. Once that is done, you're going to stuff the lining inside. And since the lining is half an inch shorter, you're going to notice that the outside of your book sleeve kind of overlaps and that's what we want. Then you're just going to stitch around the opening of your book sleeve with a fourth of an inch seam allowance to kind of connect and hold your layers together without the lining coming out. And this will also give it a nice crisp seam. I also decided partway through this project to switch the tag to the outside of my book sleeve. This is completely optional, but this is what the book sleeve looks like. Our next DIY project is a jumbo lace scrunchie. So you're going to need a fabric, lace, and elastic. Your pattern piece for this is going to be 27.5 inches long and 6.5 inches wide. Then you're going to cut one piece of fabric from that and then a piece of lace that is the length of the side of that pattern piece, which is going to be 27.5 inches. You are going to fold that strip of fabric in half long ways to sandwich the lace in between between the two layers and then you're gonna leave about one to two inches unsewn and unpinned on the edges that's where we're going to attach like the whole scrunchie together but first we're just gonna sandwich the lace in between our two layers You're going to sew the side of your scrunchie, sandwiching your lace in between those two layers with a fourth of an inch seam allowance. Again, remember to leave about one to two inches open on the ends of those seams. Mm -hmm. 
Now that you have the side sewn together, you're going to flip it right side out. You can just kind of do this by pulling it all through. And then you're gonna see all the cute ruffles. And now it's time to sew those edges together. Before you do anything else though, you're going to want to press your fabric so that all of the wrinkles are out. Now you're going to take those side edges and you're going to place them together, right sides together and pin them. This might be a little tricky since you only left a really small portion of the sides open. So you kind of just have to pivot your fabric as you pin it together and as you sew it, you're gonna sew that on a fourth of an inch seam allowance so that when you pull it, the rest of your kind of lacy ruffles will kind of just sit to the inside. You're also going to sew the ends of your lace together and then trim any excess off. Those lace pieces are going to just sit inside. You're going to kind of sandwich them in between the openings and then you're also going to cut your elastic piece. I usually like to cut this to just whatever is a comfortable fit around my wrist. You're going to put a safety pin in the end of that and then you're going to feed it through the jumbo opening of your scrunchie. You're also going to want to make sure that when you get just a small portion of elastic sticking out of your opening that you place a pin in it so that it doesn't get pulled through the entire thing because you don't want to have to redo this. Then you're just going to push and pull your safety pin all the way through the kind of giant sections of this scrunchie all the way till your safety pin comes out of the opening that you started with. Once you have both ends of your elastic out of your opening, you're just going to take your safety pin off and then tie those elastic ends together to make a knot. Then you're going to just kind of pull your scrunchie so that the elastic goes into the casing of the scrunchie. And then we're going to sew the hole closed. And we are going to sew the hole closed by making sure to fold those raw edges in and make sure that both edges of our scrunchie are sandwiching the lace that is left. And we're just gonna pin that into place and stitch it right on the edge. And here's what the jumbo lace scrunchie looks like. There's a ton of variations you can do for this, including changing out the lace and the fabric and the sizing. Our last easy DIY project is a jumbo hair bow. Everyone loves a good hair bow, so this hair bow is going to be 32 inches long by six and a half inches wide. That's going to be your pattern piece. You're going to cut one piece of that out, and then you're going to cut a bow center piece that's going to be two inches wide by four inches. So starting with our long bow piece, we are going to fold it in half, long sides together, we are going to put two pins that are about three inches apart in the center of this piece. That's going to be the opening that's going to help us flip our bow right side out. And we are also going to cut diagonal corners on this bow. So I just folded my bow piece over and then diagonally cut it together. You can leave the end straight or you can cut the diagonal like I did. Then we're gonna come back and put all of our pins along the side of this bow and then we are going to sew those edges with a fourth of an inch seam allowance making sure to leave the center of the bow open we're also going to sew our bow center and we're going to do that by folding it along side across and then also sewing on the edge so once all of our pieces are pinned we're just going to sew those both with a fourth of an inch seam allowance that's going to be our bow center piece and then our actual bow we're going to sew along with those kind of diagonal corners that we cut pivot at the corners and then sew the sides making sure to leave about a three inch opening in the center of our bow piece
Before you flip your bow right side out, you're going to want to go trim all of your corners just so that they lay really nice and flat. And then we're going to flip it right side out. I like to use a pair of scissors for this. Probably shouldn't be using a pair of scissors. They're like loop turners and corner like punchers and things like that, but scissors come in handy. So we're just going to use our scissors to kind of poke those corners out and make them nice and pokey as the corners should be. And then pull our entire bow shape out. We're also going to want to press that as well. Then we're going to do the same thing for our bow center. Just put a safety pin along one of the sides and use the safety pin to help us flip it right side out. After you flip all of those pieces right side out, you are going to want to press them at your iron so that they are nice and flat. Now it's time to construct our bow shape. But before we do that, we have to make sure and sew the opening that we left in our bow closed. So you're just going to pin that and sew it literally just right on the edge. You're also going to want to make sure that you have a pair of these kind of bow clip snaps. You can find these at any craft store. They're usually like on the jewelry or hair accessory aisle. You're just going to need one of these. Then we're going to fold our bow piece in half long ways, find the center and put a pin in the center. This is going to help us create the bow shape. Then we're going to take the side tails of our bows and we are going to fold them over to that center pin. I want the sides of my bow to be four inches wide. So as you can see, there are four inch squares that span the whole kind of side of that bow. We're gonna do that for both sides. So on the left side, we're gonna fold it over four inches and then put a pin along the center. Then we're going to sew where those pins are to hold the fabric in place to create the shape of the bow. Then you're just going to do a simple stitch from top to bottom, right where you put those pens to create the side shapes of your bow. And now as you can see, we're starting to get a little bow shape. So we have the main part of the bow and kind of the tails. Then you're gonna take a needle and thread and you're just going to run a simple basting stitch through the center of your bow. You could also do this with a basting stitch on your sewing machine. This basting stitch is going to allow you to kind of pull and bunch the center of your bow together. After you bunch it to the desired amount, you're gonna take the rest of the needle and thread and you're just going to kind of run a stitch back through all of those bunches to hold them in place. Now you're gonna center the bow clip in the back center of the bow, and then you're gonna take the center bow portion that we made out of fabric, and you're just going to wrap it around the center of the bow and then under and through the bow clip. You're going to trim off any raw edges and you're going to kind of fold those edges under and then just keep kind of pulling the bow center around to kind of lock it into place. I'm going to fold my raw edges under and then pin it into place and that's going to give a nice center of the bow and also help it kind of stay onto the bow clip. Using a needle and thread you're going to stitch that folded edge down so that the center of the bow will actually stay held to the bow clip. If you have a hot glue gun, you can also use that. It'd be way quicker, but I just decided to hand sew mine. And as you can see, this is what it looks like close up all my stitching and also how the center of the bow made out of fabric is kind of looped around the bow clip. And this is now what the bow looks like with the tails. If you like the tails out to the side like this, you can leave it. I decided that I wanted my tails more in the center, so I just flipped my bow over and then took kind of the inside edges of those tails and sewed them together so that the tails would kind of be permanently more centered in the middle of my bow. Again, that's a personal preference, but I kind of liked how these laid a little bit more. So just again with my needle and thread, I just stitched those little edges together so that it would make a nicer shape. Thank you. 
And there you have it. There is your DIY jumbo bow. Perfect for your friends or family that love fashion. And again, if you need some last minute Christmas presents that are DIY and sewing related, I hope that you try out some of these. And if you do, make sure to tag me so that I can see your own creations. I love how all of these turned out. I actually literally made these for friends and family and they were so much fun so I hope that you enjoyed watching this tutorial got some inspiration and as always don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and as always make sure that you're subscribed to my channel to stay updated on new videos coming out in the future. Merry Christmas and happy sewing!